everyone seems to be incredibly warm about. So Jeff McDonald is a former global VP of, of, uh, um, global VP of HR at Unilever. So he's former, but part of that company, and no doubt it's very kind of powerful brand as an ethical company. So Jeff has spent much of his career trying to embed purpose and well-being at the heart of a huge multinational organization, not without success. So Jeff, share your thoughts. With you. Thank you, Matthew. Two schoolboy errors. Two of them. One is agreeing to go last on the panel, because all that I wanted to say has been said. Um, and I'm not sure what the second one is, but it'll come to me just now. Um, so I kind of agree with a lot of what has been said on the panel today. I mean, the, it's really important to have this concept of purpose. Um, uh, we've really got to build all this stuff into the infrastructure of organizations. Uh, we've got to have the right kind of environment. Uh, yet, since leaving Unilever over the last couple of years, I've been spending a huge amount of time trying to get organizations to really, really think about this concept of purpose and live it. Not just have it as some wonderful statement, which I now call purpose washing. There's so much purpose washing that's going on out there right now, where everybody's got these lovely purpose statements, which are all about enhancing the reputation of the organization and maybe attracting some millennials, because millennials are looking for purpose. Right? So they just go down this route of what I call purpose washing. And let me just share with you, I think, because I agree with what everybody has said on the panel in terms of, you know, values in pursuit of what? In pursuit of what? And that's why I think this concept of purpose becomes so important. And then we have to, we have to begin to, I think, shift our mindsets around what is the purpose of business. And Matthew was saying, well, it's, it, it's kind of, or alluded to, the purpose is to make money. Well, I would say that that's the consequence of doing good business. It's not the purpose of business. It's the consequence. And it's a little bit like, it's a little bit like, in order for me to live every single day, what have I got to do? What have I got to do? I've got to breathe. I've got to breathe. But I don't live to breathe. I live to do something else. And it's the same, I think, with organization. I think we've got to find a way, and the system's not helping where organizations and CEOs have got the courage to think beyond growth and profitability. And people will say, well, tell me, you know, in Unilever, of course, Unilever quarterly results, but guess what? There was a courageous leader there who went to the market and said, no more guidance. He said, no more guidance. No more guidance. He had courage to go to the market and say, no more guidance. And so I think we've got one, I think we need more courage. We need more courageous leaders in organizations today to kind of say, enough is enough. The old system is not working. We have to find a way of ensuring that all stakeholders share in the value of the organization. The second thing is, I think what I'm seeing is organizations trying to answer the question, why do we exist? It's not about why we exist. I think it's about why we do what we do. Because the only way you can live your purpose authentically is by doing what you do. So the only way Unilever can live its purpose is by selling more brands, selling more Lifebuoy, selling more Dove, selling more Surf, so that it can enhance it, the health and the well-being and improve the environment, et cetera, et cetera. So it's about why do we do what we do. Finally, what I would say is that what I see is I see these wonderful purpose statements, so like the one that Matthew described, which was about delighting our customers. Well, what does that mean? What does it actually mean? How do you measure it? How do you set some goals in place to see whether you actually are performing and you are living that sense of purpose? They're lovely purpose statements, but then when I ask people, what does it actually mean? Tell me, what are the goals? What are the measures? How are you going to know? Whether, how are you going to hold one another accountable as to whether you're living that purpose? Well, nobody can answer that question. Nobody can answer that question. And then finally, finally, I think what James was saying is absolutely true. This requires a significant, significant transformation. This is not about just leaders going off and finding their own purpose and getting all hunky-dory and happy about it and then going out into the organization and finding that all the systems and the policies and the processes work against everything. That they do. This requires significant hard graft, and it doesn't happen overnight. And in Unilever's case, they continue on this journey 10 years into the transformation of that organization. 10 years, and there aren't too many CEOs who hang around that long.
Um, Jeff, can I just ask, where do you think the boundaries are to the responsibility of uh, a, a corporation? So, you know, we have the kind of concept of shared value. There's a responsibility for supply chains, for employees, for the relationship with the community. Where do you... I mean, there must come a point where it feels like you can't take responsibility for everything in the world. That, that, that kind of question of where is your kind of footprint, how, how, how do you think corporations need to respond to that? Yeah, Matthew, I, I do think it is about, it is about, and I don't know where the, I don't know where, where the, the boundary is absolutely, but I do think as an organization, we've got to move beyond saying that the only reason we exist is to create value for our shareholder. I think it has to go beyond the shareholder. I think it has to go the communities in which we operate in. And for all organizations, it might be a little bit different. But what are the communities that I operate in? The consumer or my customer, they are a, they are a stakeholder of my business. And we've got, to, we've got to meet their needs as well. I've also got to look after my suppliers in the supply chain. Uh, none of these issues, you know, trying to be a more purpose-led organization, it's so difficult to do because you can't do it on your own. You need a kind of cross and a collaborative approach to this. And so therefore, charities, academia, cross-sector collaboration, which brings kind of systems thinking and a new way of doing things. So I think you've got to identify, you know, uh, you know who are those key so, for example, in Unilever's case, you know, we could have gone and supported every single charity in the world. No ways. We can't do that. We had to choose four or five that were truly going to help us to live our purpose and then make, really partner with those. So, yes, we had to tell the blind school in North America, we're not going to give you any more money. Why? Because that didn't help us sell one more bar of soap. Not one more bar of soap. So, I think it's about trying to identify beyond the shareholder those critical stakeholders that are absolutely critical in helping you to live your purpose and at the same time deliver growth and profitability for your organization.